All right, guys. <clears throat> it is a kind of a dark, gloomy, rainy day here in the end times in paradise on Sunday, March 13, 2016. Although I do see a ray of sunshine popping out here about 2.30 in the afternoon. But Sunday is the day I bring you my weekly doomsday sermon and I just finished reading the final chapter from uh, this book on suicide great writers on the ultimate question I read a lengthy reading from William novelist William Styron's spot on essay about depression called Darkness Visible. Darkness Visible, where William Styron, who suffers from depression more eloquently than anybody I have ever, ever encountered anywhere in this book or anywhere else, manages to articulate depression to uh, certainly for someone such as myself who's suffered depression all his life and particularly for people who have never uh, felt depression and you know being depressed trying to explain what depression feels like uh, you know it's trying to like explain the color purple to someone who's colorblind, or better yet, even blind. There, there's just this canyon that celebrates, that celebrates, yes, that separates those of us who have experienced this, this poison in our lives, this, just this black, this, this black poison. Uh, that, that comes out of nowhere and it just eats your brain and your life. Uh, so anyway, I encourage you, I'll put the link to that. That, that. I didn't get to read the whole thing. That went on for about 45 minutes. I just want to, since I don't expect many people, um, many people made it this far. I, I'm, I'm just going to reread uh, one paragraph, one paragraph where he's trying uh, the paragraph, the preceding paragraph, which you'll find in the full reading, he, he talks about trying to compare uh, depression to somebody with a, with, with a physical ailment, particularly a physical pain and, and how except in cases, you know, serious terminal pain, that most people, when they get some sort of physical pain, they know that there is an end in sight. And this is the big watershed between uh, people who are depressed and not. So I'm going to read this, this one paragraph and then just make some of my own comments about this uh, this excellent essay. <clears throat> in depression, this faith in deliverance from pain in ultimate restoration is absent. The pain of depression is unrelenting and what makes the condition intolerable is the foreknowledge that no remedy will come, not in a day, an hour, a month, or a minute. If there is mild relief, one knows that it is only, tempor only temporary and more pain will follow. It is this hopelessness even more than the pain that crushes the soul. What he's talking about here is, is, is as bad as the pain is, 
this this knowledge by people who are depressed knowing there's no escaping from it it's going to be with you for a lifetime it comes and it goes uh, I actually had a pretty good year last year 2015 was actually for some reason which I can't understand I wasn't very depressed but boy is that changing rapidly this year uh, it, it is it is this 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 utter hopelessness that this is going to be a lifetime condition this is what drives people to kill themselves it is it, it is not just the pain but this the, the the cellular knowledge that you're going to be victimized by this pain that nobody else can see so the decision making of the decision making of daily life involves not as in normal affairs shifting from one annoying situation to another less annoying or from discomfort to relative comfort or from boredom to activity but moving from pain to pain it, it, it is this inescapability that, uh, that, that he's talking about here, that, that it, this inescapability from the pain and, and the hopelessness of realizing that even if you do escape from it or delude yourself into thinking that you've escaped from it, it's only going to follow you wherever you go. <clears throat> One, meaning a depressed person, does not abandon even briefly one's bed of nails, but is attached to it wherever one goes. And uh, again, this is, uh, you know, wh wh what he's talking about here as I've mentioned in these other rants and, and has just come home to roost here that not here I am sitting here I, you know with my back up against the wall in paradise in St. Croix Virgin Islands uh, there's it, it doesn't matter where you go I, I understand this uh, you, you know I, I used to think earlier in, in my naivete before I just caved into this hopelessness that it used to be when when I would get really depressed I would think if if only I can find the the perfect place to live that was probably the number way number one way I thought that I could escape the pain and the hopelessness of knowing that this pain was un, it was going to be unrelenting for the rest of my life. That I could just go somewhere, uh, beautiful, uh, from one paradise to the other, and this is why in my life what I have done is gone from one beautiful place to another. Well, I've lived for years in the redwoods. I've lived for years uh, in Costa Rica on the beaches. I've lived in Ecuador, in Peru, uh, South Austin, Texas, not so beautiful. That, that's, that's part of the other thing that, if, that I thought if I could just find either the, the, the perfect woman is in my younger days thinking I actually believed that there was such thing as the perfect woman and, and if and if I could just find my my female soulmate that that she would somehow fill this what David Olney calls the this uh, God-sized hole in my heart 
And so what I would do is just go from woman to woman to woman until I got depressed and uh, either she would get sick of me or I would get sick of her or a little bit of both usually and we would part company, which is why I'm sitting here alone in paradise. And, uh, and then it was more in, in South Austin, Texas, I think, is if I could just find my tribe. And, and I did come closer in South Austin, Texas and anywhere in, in my entire life. There was about a five year uh, spread there where I was the least depressed I've ever been, where I actually deluded myself into thinking that I had found my tribe. And it, and it did blunt the pain for a few years. Uh, you, you know, trying just the, just the running around with a bunch of what I call my lovable, clueless, moron friends. It did help for a few years. You know, or, or the or the other uh, the the other thing that I used to think of. You, you know, if 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 only. I, I could get to find the right job, make more money, you, you know, the usual list of suspects, and it doesn't make any difference. So there I was a few years ago uh, making over $100,000 a year, uh, running around uh, with, uh, with my tribe of uh, of lovable clueless morons uh, you know going out partying every night having a successful real estate business uh, but by by all accounts I, I was leading a pretty charmed life probably 95 percent of this planet would have uh, would have traded places with me but 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 what did I do uh, I I cashed in my chips, which uh, again is, is is part of what I'm gonna talk about in a minute is being the collapsitarian part of it. Uh, I just want to finish out uh, this paragraph, but but uh, you know this this is the heart of it, and so uh, it, it is all of this uh, this faith in deliverance from pain being absent in a depressed person's life, this, according to Styron, results in a striking experience, one which I have called, borrowing military terminology, the situation of the walking wounded. For in virtually any other sickness, a patient who felt similar devastation as someone who is depressed would be lying flat in bed, as, as a lot of depressed people are. And, and I don't know how I'm even managing to be sitting up in this chair, possibly sedated and hooked up to the tubes and wires of life support systems. But at the very least, in a posture of repose, in an isolated setting. I'll have to go. Uh, here is my hammock, my posture of repose in an isolated setting, which is exactly where I uh, read this excellent essay, was uh, reposing in my hammock in an isolated setting out in the jungle in some corner of some far-flung island in the middle of the Caribbean Sea. Uh, I, I've mentioned before that in, the, in this birthday book, this horoscope of people born on my birthday, September 22nd, the, uh, the help warning to live by, the, the words of war parting words of warning in the birthday book, for people born on September 22nd, beware the depressive effects of isolation. 
Yeah, you can see how well I'm, I'm bewaring the depressive effects of isolation sitting here out here in the jungle by myself. <clears throat> At the very least, in a posture of repose and in an isolated setting, his invalidism would be necessary, unquestioned, and honorably attained. However, the sufferer from depression has no such option and therefore finds himself like a walking casualty of war thrust into the most intolerable social and family situations. And so this is uh, what I started to do a rant about and didn't. Uh, you know, like a few nights ago, I, I was in the middle uh, of a crowd of 14 people here. There were 14 people uh, eating, drinking, and being merry here. And, and I was in the, in the middle of these 14 people, and all I could hear was just, it was just this noise, this indecipherable chatter. And, and I was sitting there just completely alone in the middle of 14 people just at an absolute loss trying to figure out what it was that people talk about that I have just I have lost my ability for chit chat and small talk I, I don't know how to do it anymore if I ever did they're talking about, you know, depressed people being thrust into intolerable social situations where he must, despite the anguish devouring his brain, present a face approximating the one that is associated with ordinary events and companionship. He must try to utter small talk and be responsive to questions as if anybody in, in that uh, crowd of 15 people ever asked me a question and knowingly nod and frown and God forbid even smile but it is a fierce trial attempting to speak a few simple words which is why uh, I take my words uh, here to my little imaginary friends on Humpty Dumpty Tribe. Uh, so that was a few nights ago and last night, Saturday night, on this depressing rainy Saturday night I was once again the only person the only person in the community kitchen because everyone else was off doing what people do off in their in in their little groups of people uh, going out on a Saturday night while I was sitting here uh, with my thumb up my ass on YouTube uh, wondering where everybody went uh, making one more meal by myself uh, you know, who was it, uh, Epicurus, that Greek philosopher Epicurus, saying the single most depressing thing that you can do on earth is to prepare and eat a meal by yourself. But of course, I did have my little dog, and, uh, and I will say, guys, make no mistake about it. Uh, that uh, if you are depressed uh, and, and are sick and tired of, of the company of humans, go get yourself a dog. Trust me on this one. This little dog uh, is probably saving my life uh, right now. And this little happy-go-lucky dog. <laughs> anyway, but of course, what... Uh, what I don't know about William Styron, 
since he never talked about it and I'm not that familiar with his work but my guess is this does not apply to him is this whole other aspect of, of, of my depression which is the the depressed collapsitarian angle and that is uh, that, that what has happened to me in the past few years since I pulled my head out of my ass is that when, when you're already what's going on little doggy I think the fire ants are after my little dog uh, when you're already uh, a, a depressive personality and then you pull your head out of your ass and, and you understand the absolute utter hopelessness of, of the situation on this planet uh, not just your own your own teeny weeny little personal drama that it used to be in this fantasy when I when I thought that I was gonna learn how to beat this shit that once I figured out the great the great secret uh, of solving my own little personal teeny weeny little drama that uh, that, that that all would be rosy in the world but but now I have the 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 extra layer of uh, of getting rid of that fantasy that uh, e e even if I do fix all of my problems that I find the perfect place to live that I find my soulmate uh, that, that I find the perfect job uh, the planet is still fucked, you know, and, and since I understand that 99% of the population of the planet, including this little dog, this happy-go-little dog, uh, having zero clue the level of crisis uh, that, this, that this civilization this species and this planet is in uh, since 99 percent of uh, uh, of the population is completely unaware of uh, of what is going on on this planet uh, I'm assuming that 99 percent of people uh, of depressed people are unaware of this too but uh, co depressed collapsitarians, we get the worst of both worlds. You know? But anyway, guys, uh, don't worry, all hand bone. Uh, there, there's no danger uh, of me uh, uh, of uh, of me taking myself out because I've peeled back enough layers of the onion to understand that death is is no better than it makes no difference dead or alive dead or alive uh, it just follows you but I'm gonna wrap up this rant because the Sun is coming out in paradise and my happy-go-lucky little dog my little sidekick, Sancho Panza, says it's time to go to the beach and chase some crabs. And somewhere, somehow, I'm going to find the energy, and don't ask me where, to get out of this chair and walk two miles to the beach to watch another gorgeous sunset over the end times and uh, that's what I have I have this little dog and another gorgeous sunset awaiting me bye guys Are you ready to go to the beach? Oh, Katie dead. Katie dead falling out of the sky.
I guess just Katie did. Just had his last chirp. Just fell dead out of the sky. Get it. Get that bug. You get that bug. Get it. Get that bug. You know, you never know. You never know when your number is up. Maybe I can actually uh, take the tarp off of my my little bivouac in the end times and uh, dry out this soggy ass tent. And this, guys, is what I've traded a uh, a beautiful four bedroom three bath home in South Austin, Texas. This is what uh, eight years as a depressed collapsitarian has gotten me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is it. This is what a little hell hole I call home. There's my uh, kitchen. Here's my bedroom. Here's the the living room, and here is the uh, the sun porch, I guess, or the shade porch. And I wonder why. Ah, uh, there's the refrigerator. I wonder why. Uh, I have not found my soulmate in paradise. Can you think of any reason why the women of the world are not flocking to paradise? But it has turned into a beautiful day. So I am off to the beach as soon as my little beach bum sidekick finishes eating this Katie did. Bye guys.